Unit 3, Bookkeeping Cycle. In this unit, you will learn more about how a business is to be assessed in terms of its profits and losses, and how its properties, obligations, capitalization, and methods are evaluated. At the end of this unit, you should be able to describe the main responsibilities of a bookkeeper, discuss the basic terms and forms of bookkeeping, explain the key tasks in bookkeeping, prepare the key bookkeeping reports, evaluate the success or failure of a business, discuss the importance of business evaluation, explain the differences in the methods of evaluation, and realize the objective of each method. Lesson number one, the main responsibilities of a bookkeeper. Generally, all entrepreneurs engage in business because of the desire to obtain profits. This reason could also be probably one of the major reasons for engaging in business. As much as possible, losses should be avoided at all costs. But how can the entrepreneur know if his or her business is earning or not? The answer to this lies in bookkeeping. The method of bookkeeping is a complicated process if the entrepreneur who does this has no knowledge and does not possess bookkeeping skills. The job of keeping the books or records of a firm is called bookkeeping. This job is done by a bookkeeper who is trained in this process of accounting. A bookkeeper must be a person with a knowledge in accounting who performs procedural aspects of accounting such as recording, classifying, and summarizing the transactions of the business. There are several reasons why there is a need to keep records of business operations. Financial records are important to the following entities. To the owner of owners. Records provide the necessary information of the results of business operations and the financial conditions of the business. Through these, an entrepreneur is able to monitor whether his or her investment generates income or incurs losses. At the same time, he or she is able to assess the amount of his or her obligations and his or her equity in the business. To the government, records are required by the government, institutions such as the Bureau of Internal Revenue and the Securities and Exchange Commission. Businesses are obliged to submit the annual financial reports to these institutions. In the case of the Bureau of Internal Revenue, the financial statements are used to assess the taxes that should be paid and to determine whether a firm has paid its taxes or not. To the creditors. Records provide the suppliers and other creditors the reference or basis as to whether they will extend credit to the business or not. They can gauge the paying capacity of the business through these financial reports. This would enable the creditors to determine how much loan they can offer. The task of a bookkeeper. An understanding of accounting is necessary to be able to manage the firm's financial resources such as money and property. The improper handling of these resources would result to situations that might lead to the bankruptcy of the firm. The entrepreneur is guided in his or her decisions from time to time by information gathered from financial reports. In relation to the provision of financial information, a bookkeeper is tasked to do the following. 
establish the type and arrangement of the books to be used, gather the important documents related to the business events, record the documents to the books of the firm, provide financial reports regarding the profits or losses and the firm's financial resources, see to it that financial reports are submitted to the users on time. Sometimes, the bookkeeper is only tasked to record the business documents, especially in big firms where different persons handle each job. However, in a small firm where there are only few business events, the bookkeeper functions is maximized to the fullest by giving him or her other related functions. Establishing the books. When one starts a business, the type of arrangement of books and records most suitable to a particular operation should be established, keeping in mind the taxes and other government requirements to be paid and their respective due dates. In establishing the books, the following terms must be understood. Number one, accounting. A systemic recording, classifying, summarizing, and interpreting of transaction. Number two, transaction. A business event that leads to an exchange of values between the firm and other entities. Number three, bookkeeping. The process of maintaining company records with the objective of generating financial reports. Number four, journals a device where transactions are recorded. Number five, ledger, a device used to sort out similar transactions pertaining to specific accounts. It gives the balances of any account at any date. Number six, accounts, the term used to indicate assets, liabilities, owner's equity, income, expenses, and withdrawals. Number seven, Financial reports. Financial information such as the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. Number eight, debit. The left side of an account. Number nine, credit. The right side of an account. Number ten, income. The increases in owner's equity which are normally due to the rendering of service or the sale of products. Number 11, expenses. Decreases in owner's equity, which are normally due to its operation. Number 12, assets. The money or property owned by the business. Number 13, liabilities. Obligations or debts of the business to other parties or creditors. Number 14, capital or owner's equity, the capitalization or the share of the owner in the net assets of the business. Number 15, withdrawals or drawings, temporary decreases in the capital by the owner. Gathering of business documents. Once a business opens, Negotiations with various individuals and other institutions. In the process of negotiation, documents are drawn as evidences of this transaction. The function of a bookkeeper is to gather all the documents as evidences of a business event. These documents are the following. Sales Invoice this is issued by a firm to a customer every time a sale is made. This document indicates revenues from the sale of goods. This invoice should bear the company's name. A sales invoice may also be received from suppliers. These invoices represent cost or expenses to the firm. 
cash or check voucher. This document is prepared when paying supplier, a customer for refunds, employees for salaries or advances, other creditors for operating expenses and loans. Prior to the release of a check, a cash voucher must be prepared. Petty cash voucher is prepared when the firm has a petty cash refund for small expenses. A revolving amount is set aside for this purpose. A disbursement is liquidated when the fund is almost depleted. The releasing of petty cash is assigned to one person who must see to it that an approved petty cash voucher is presented before cash is released. Official Receipt This document is issued by the firm every time cash is received. Normally, cash is received from customers' sales, from suppliers for refunds, and the like. Recording of Business Documents As noted from the preceding discussion, Business documents vary in terms of their nature on how the event is created. For example, an invoice received from a supplier is different from the invoice given by the entrepreneur to a customer. While the first invoice indicates a purchase, the second invoice indicates a sale. Thus, the bookkeeper should be knowledgeable in terms of the differences in various transactions. By just looking at the documents, the bookkeeper should know how a document is to be recorded and where they should be recorded. As a rule, all documents supporting the transactions must be filed and stored in a safe, orderly manner. These documents may be official receipts, cancelled checks, paid bills, vouchers, and other documents that substantiate the entries in the business records. After business documents are sorted out, these are then recorded by the bookkeeper. A bookkeeper should know where a document is to be recorded. A firm might have several books for specific business events. Among other records, a business should generate the following books or journals. Sales journal includes all revenue or sales derived from the sale of products or the performance of services on account. Some businesses also record each sales in the sales journal. The sales invoices issued by the firm would be recorded in this journal. If a business has several product lines, sales should be determined individually. Individual presentation provides the information as to what product lines are saleable and which are not. For example, the sales journal may show that there are more customers who buy powdered milk instead of evaporated or condensed milk. In this case, you can focus on those product lines that can give your business maximum profits. On the other hand, you can also minimize the investment exposure in those product lines that provide a minimal sale. Purchase Journal Records merchandise purchased from suppliers on credits. Just like Sales Journal, some firms record cash purchases in the Purchases Journal. The sale invoices received from the suppliers would be recorded in this journal. Similar to the Sale Journal, the Purchase Journal can be one large category or be divided into the individual product lines. In manufacturing firms, this can be divided in terms of raw materials. Again, if one is producing dresses, cloth purchases may be separated from the button purchases. The purchase journal provides the information as to where the bulk of purchases goes. Cash Receipts Journal Accounts for all the money generated through cash sales collections of accounts receivable and other cash sources, hence the official receipts issued by the firm are recorded in this journal. 
cash disbursement journal. Records all disbursement made by the firm. A firm may break down the cash disbursement journal into specific types of expenses. As a rule, specific types of expenses are provided for recurring transactions or those that are always encountered. These specific accounts could fall under rent, salaries, utilities, supplies, transportation, maintenance, advertising, and the like that are used by the business. The Petty Cash Fund records all small disbursements that are immediate and small in amount. For example, a taxi driver will not accept check payments. The payment for this is taken from the Petty Cash Fund. Since cash disbursement focus on check payments, the firm has to establish a Petty Cash Fund for small expenses. A petty cash custodian must be designated for this purpose, who becomes accountable for the safekeeping and cash releasing. The petty cash custodian keeps records for the amount received as well as the payment made. He or she will be accountable to cash deficits that would arise from the fund. He or she is also tasked to ensure the continuity of available funds when needed. General Journal Records transactions which cannot be recorded in the Sales Journal, Purchases Journal, Cash Receipts Journal, and Cash Disbursement Journal. Examples of these transactions are owner's investment in the form of an equipment, sales returns, and purchase returns, and others. Ledger the business also has to keep ledgers. Ledgers provided or provides information on the balances of accounts. For example, a general ledger for cash represents the cash balance every day. The general ledger for accounts receivable would show how much receivables are there every day. These general ledgers, such as accounts receivable and accounts payable, are supported by subsidiary ledgers. Subsidiary ledger show the balances of individual accounts. These subsidiary ledgers show the individual balances of the customers and suppliers. These are accounts receivable ledger, contains historical records and the balances of the customers of the business. This shows the outstanding balance of each customer. This would guide one as to who among the customers are paying on time and who are not. Accounts Payable Ledger contains historical records and the balances of the firm's obligations to its suppliers. These show the outstanding balances per supplier or creditor. Sales Journal Note a debit to accounts receivable means an increase in receivables while a credit to sales means an increase in the revenues of the firm. The F represents folio. Folio is the reference column which is checked when the data are posted to the ledgers, accounts receivable, and sales. Purchase Journal Notes a debit to purchase means an increase in expenses or cost of merchandise, while a credit to account payable means an increase in the liability of the firm. The F is check when the data are posted to the ledgers, purchases, and accounts payable. Cash receipts. Notes, a debit to cash means increases in the assets of the firm. A credit to accounts receivable being an asset means a decrease in the receivables of the firm. A credit to sales means increases in the revenues of the firm. The credit to the capital account indicates an increase in the investment of the owner. The F column is checked when the accounts receivable is posted to the subsidiary ledger. The F column in the subsidiary in the sundry section is also checked when the transaction is posted to the capital ledger. Sundry is for the accounts or items which are not found in the special columns 
these accounts are not normally encountered by the business. The other accounts which have special columns are posted in the general ledger. Posting is done by totals at the end of the month. Cash Disbursement Journal Notes A credit in cash indicates a decrease in the cash of the firm. A debit in accounts payable indicates a decrease in the payables of the firm. A debit in purchase indicates an increase in the cost of merchandise purchased by the firm. A debit in drawings indicates an increase in the withdrawals of the owner. A debit in salaries indicates an increase in the expenses of the firm. F represents folio, which is for the reference. It is checked when the transaction is already posted to the ledgers. A anytime the debits must be equal to credits. Voucher means voucher. General Journal Notes a debit in equipment means an increase in the assets of the firm. A credit in capital means an increase in investment of the owner. Sample General Ledger Notes SG1 means Sales Journal, page 1. CRJ1 means Cash Receipts Journal, page 1. The General Ledger for accounts receivable contains all the transactions involving several customers. Each ledger bears an account code. Subsidiary Accounts Receivable Ledger Notes SJ means Sales Journal, page 1. CRJ means Cash Receipts Journal, page 1. Debit represents increases in the receivable. Credit represents decreases in the receivable. General Ledger of Accounts Payable Notes PJ1 means Purchases Journal, page 1. CDJ1 means Cash Disbursements Journal, page 1. Subsidiary Accounts Payable Ledger Notes PJ means Purchases Journal, page 1. CDJ1 represents Cash Disbursements Journal, page 1. Credit represents increases in the payable. Debit represents decreases in the payable. Providing financial reports to the owner. The journals have to be summarized by the firm's bookkeeper so that financial reports can be made. There are three basic financial reports that a bookkeeper should do. Income Statement, Balance Sheet, Cash Flow Statement. This will be thoroughly discussed in Lesson Number 4. Submission of Financial Reports to the Users The objective of the preparation of the financial reports is for the intended users to be aware of this information. It is the task of the bookkeeper that this financial information are submitted to these users promptly. The users of this financial information could be internal such as the owners and managers, or it could be external such as the government agencies and the creditors.